Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Never to Do Mistakes for Network Engineers, an exclusive series only on Networkers Home YouTube channel. Today, in this series, I have come up with another mistake that the network engineers usually make. So let's see about the mistake. As you can see on the screen here, Today's topic is about uses of the debug command and mistakes while leaving it on. So what are the mistakes? You just start a debug and you leave it on. So today we'll be talking about the impact, that what will be the impact of the debug. Then we'll also talk about a demonstration where I'll show you that how actually the things work and what happens when you leave a debug as on and if you're not using proper debug commands. And at last, I'll be sharing you with the preventive approaches that you can use to avoid such mistakes. So let's get started. First of all, if we talk about the debug command, the debug command is used to troubleshoot the network problems. In your network, any sort of problem is there, any traffic is coming in, going out. So you want to see that what is happening with the traffic. You want to read a copy of a traffic, right? So you can do that with the help of debug command, right? And the debug command will consistently generate logs for all the messages or all the packets that are coming in or going out. So that will cause a heavy CPU uses. That will cause very heavy CPU uses. Okay. And it can even disrupt the device operation if you have just left the debug on. Okay. Or enabled for an extended time. Because over time it will keep on generating logs. And at times you might even lose access to the device. Because the number of packets. Because in the enterprises millions of packets are traveling. Right. So number of packets that will be there and number of logs that will be generated, it will be so used that the device will not be able to register your comments and it will disrupt your device operation. And at times your device might crash also and can go down. So let's see this thing practically. Here you can see I have two routers, R1 and R2. R1 has an IP address 172.16.1.1 while R2 has an IP address 172.16.1.2. Now what I'll be doing is I'll be enabling debug on the R1 and from R2, I'll initiate a traffic. And we will see that that traffic will be coming onto the R1, right? So let's see this. Here, I have the console of both R1 and R2. And you can see if I show you the IP address, show IP interface brief. So here, 172.16.1.1. And here, I have show IP interface brief. Here, I have 1.2. So I'll go and enable debug. So while enabling debug, what generally the network engineers do is they will enable everything. They'll say debug all and say yes. Now this is entire debug. So even by mistake, you don't have to start this kind of debug. Why? Because this consumes a lot of CPU as in a huge number of uh, log messages are getting generated here and every single copy of your traffic will be shown here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to initiate traffic from R2. I'll say ping 172.16.1.1 and if I initiate this ping even this traffic will be visible here okay you can see that right there's a debug so whatever the traffic is coming in that entire traffic will be shown here and huge amount of traffic is going in now in enterprises what happens millions of packets are traveling so I'll try to initiate a huge amount of traffic for the same I'll say repeat it maybe 5000 times now what will happen what you'll see here is use amount of log messages now this number is so used and the logs are going in so fast right now how do you stop it you see even if i try to hit enter i'm not able to hit an enter here and if i try to type in any command also so even though i have typed the command but still you see it's not stopping right that's what the debug does so how do you prevent because even after this, when I'll show you the CPU uses, the CPU uses will be very high. Okay. So now you can see I'm having the CLI, but still the log messages are appearing. Okay. So let me stop the command from here. So that no extra traffic. And although I have stopped the debug also here. Now what we're going to do is we are going to see the CPU uses. So if I say show process cpu history now what you see here is take a look 
what was the CPU usage? This was per second CPU uses. Wherein earlier I was having like one percent, two percent, then thirty four percent, then I was having forty nine percent, fifty percent, right? That kind of CPU uses was there. Again, we were having forty six, twelve percent, six percent. So still, what we had seen is not yet registered. So you have not seen it here. But you see spike. The spike you can clearly see here that from one percent, two percent, it was going until fifty percent. Okay. So that's how the CPU is. Now this is uh, this was the traffic only from one source. If the traffic is coming in from you know hundreds of sources, this could kill your CPU. This could bring your device entirely down. Okay. So that's not the best approach to enable debug for everything. So what's the best preventive approach here? If you have enabled the debug by mistake, always use undebug all command. Okay. Because even if you have enabled the debug, if I say debug all. If you have enabled the debug, and if you think okay, you will close the console, and your debug will stop. No, this is not going to stop the debug. If you open the console again, the debug is still going on in the backend. You can see, the debug is still going on. Okay. So, what you have to do is you have to use undebug all command. Although you cannot see it, right? The command is undebug. All. This is one command. Other than this, you can use no debug all. Okay. This also helps you to stop the debug. And whenever you want to look at the debug, first of all, always avoid it. And still, if you want to use it, in that case, use specific debug. Let's say I need uh, to see the debug related to ICMP only. So I would say debug IP ICMP. Right now, this is only for ICMP. No other traffic will be shown here. So let me show you again. So again, uh, this time I'll not repeat it for so many times. I'll just go with the default five times. So it will show me only the file logs. Okay. Another thing is maybe you do not want it for ICMP. You want it for some other protocol. So if you say debug and you give question mark, you can see all the different protocols and everything is there. Okay. Like for example, debug EHRP is there. Debug uh, DHCP is there. Okay, so whatever the things are there, you can see here. You can find fast Ethernet interfaces. Okay, you can find your L2TP VPN interfaces. You can see here. So whatever the debug you're looking for, only enables specific debugs here. For example, you have created an access list and you want to see okay what traffic is hitting that interface. So you want to do a debug for that. So what you would do? You would say debug IP packet, and after the packet, you just give the access list number, maybe hundred. So this will be enabled only for that specific access list, not for entire packets or all the protocols, right? Again, uh, either you can use no debug IP packet hundred, sorry, or you can use again undebug command and debug all, which would stop all the debug. So that way you can uh, perform a debug only for specific protocol or service. And that's how you can save your CPU. So as you saw, leaving debug enabled can cause serious problems for your device and can even bring your device down, right? So what are the preventive approaches? First of all, never simply enable the default debug mode. That means never use the default all command. Whatever the debug you're looking for, only specific debug you enable. If you are going for ICMP traffic, go for ICMP debug only. If you want a debug related to an access list, then focus on the access list debug only. And once you are done with the debug, okay, so use undebug all or no debug all. Use these commands to stop the debug. That's how you are going to save your device from serious problems. And you can bring down the CPU overhead. So this was all for this video. I'll come up with another episode of Never To Do Mistakes very soon. If you find this information useful, do like the video and subscribe to the channel. See you guys, take care.